All right. Uh, we'll open this meeting at 6.36. Um, first, call, um, public input. Seeing none, we have Bridget Grew, class of 2020, to present the student report. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Hope you're all doing well. Um, I think everyone is ready for the break that's happening this Friday. Um, everyone's easing into the holiday, definitely ready for it. Um, with some academic matters, students have received their PSAT scores if they took it in October. Um, either sophomores or juniors could take them. Um, and today during Power Block and tomorrow, there are meetings led by the guidance department to help students understand their score breakdown. Um, you're provided with a pretty comprehensive packet of information from the college board as far as how you scored, so the guidance department kind of helps break that down so you understand sort of where you fall. Um, a lot of students are starting to hear back and continuing to hear back from colleges they've applied to, and a lot of people are starting to make decisions. <clears throat> and when we come back from the break, uh, we'll be kind of winding down term two and heading into our mid-year exams, which will be beginning on January 22nd. As far as some athletic matters, um, teams are starting to shake out those early season jitters and everyone's kind of easing into the season. So they're optimistic for a great rest of the season. The girls basketball team won their opening night game uh, last Friday against Newburyport. It was at home. And in very exciting news, Lindsay McClellan was named to the Boston Globe All-Scholastic Team uh, for cross country. I'm sure you've heard her name mentioned a lot. She's a wonderful runner. She's really an excellent athlete and definitely a great representation of North Reading. So we're very excited for her. It's a great, great thing for her. As far as fine arts matters, Shrek closed last weekend. We were very excited to sell out all four shows before we opened, so that was really exciting for us. Um, the MET judges seemed pretty excited with what we have, so we were excited to hear their comments. Those should be coming in in the next few weeks. The MET competition is the statewide musical competition, and they adjudicate your show, and then in June, we will find out if we've been nominated for anything. The winter concert for the high school is this Wednesday. You can hear the two bands, uh, Notorious, Chorus, and the piano class. They'll be performing at seven in the pack. Um, and it's the last winter concert. All of the other schools have had theirs already. Notorious, the a cappella group, was accepted into Any Voices for the first time, which is very exciting. And it's a high school a cappella competition that requires you send in a video of your group beforehand <coughs> to be selected. So it's very exciting. They've applied in the past, and this is the first year they've gotten in. So it's very exciting. And they will also be competing in Chelmsford on February 1st and 2nd. And a lot of their competitions are coming up in the next few months. They're selling choral grams during Power Block. So students and teachers can purchase a song and send it to someone. Um, and it's just embarrassing enough to be fun. So it's a great tradition. <laughs> Everyone really enjoys it. Can you, can you go to Mr. Webster's house for me? <laughs> I, I don't know. Do they travel? <laughs> no. I was also going to ask, could we send one long distance to like maybe the superintendent or something? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they would take that the hike down. Okay. That they could For do, sure. right? Yeah, I'm sure yeah. they could. Yeah, okay. I think if you made a special request, you'd okay. be totally willing. All right. And our one act I'd play love. has been selected and approved. Uh, we're doing the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. So we're very excited. It should be a lot of fun. Uh, just some other details about what's going on at school. Um, there was in house leadership, and it was hosted by the Stuco officers for the entirety <clears> of Student <throat> Council. And former MASC, which is the Massachusetts Association of School Council, um, and NRHS alum Dan Madden presented sort of on college and future planning for all of the Stuco members, which was, I hear, a great presentation. And Lizzie Barrett, who I'm sure you all know from her presenting here, has started the process to run for the MASC vice president. Um, and those elections are held at the Hyannis Conference in March. This Friday is Ugly Sweater Day. Your water bottle is <laughs> great. Um, and it's hosted by Student Council, and they're collecting donations and those donations benefit their Polar Plunge, which is also at the Hyannis Conference in March, and the donations go to the Special Olympics. And very exciting, voter registration is being hosted by Student Council throughout the month of January at school. Um, I have some work here. It's my essay on fascism, um, and I provided at the back the assignment and then the rubric so you can kind of get an idea of what we were writing about. Um, there were a variety of prompts. I wrote mine on how the Nazis' fascist beliefs dictated their educational systems and working with youth. Is that for AP history? Um, it's for world history with oh. Mr. Kane. Okay. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes. How, how's the voter registration working? What, how is someone from Town Hall coming over here, or what's the process? I believe SUCO is working with Town Hall to okay. register them, um, and it's going to be throughout the month of January, so I'm not sure if there's specific dates or every day. That's great. Mm -hmm. So they just, like, on a power block or something? Yes. They come? Mm -hmm. That's excellent. Yes, that is really good. And I'd, I'd love to see with voter registration, if, this is probably for student council more, but I'd love to see for the town elections if they, if the student council did something where they invited in the candidates and did, because really, I mean, the high school seniors that are voting, that's a big block of, of votes. I mean, and even like, you know, for school committee, there, some of the issues will directly impact the students here. And so it'd be great if somebody was running to host and meet the candidate just <coughs> focused on the issues that matter to, you know, the high school seniors. I've seen the way you pandered to students, so I knew you were. I, I knew mean, you were, I knew you were moving in that direction. I mean, I, what can I say? I got to go for the base, you know. <laughs> exactly. And and I will say, I saw Shrek, and we went to the Shrek Fest, and I think oh you were my goodness. student leader, walking my kids around. So that was a great. Thank you for coming. Great time, even though my kids were very shy, we were, were afraid to take pictures with anybody, but. <laughs> <laughs> they are pretty scary. In makeup. It's that was a fantastic oh, play. Thank you. It was thank so, you so, much. so good. <laughs> yeah. it was Seeing the dragon up front, too, in the, and, and the Shrek Fest was really cool. Yeah. yeah. And so that's where, like, again, only one of them was brave enough to even take a photo with the dragon. The imagination <laughs> that they used to get, like, the different stuff, the gingerbread, how did they make yeah. the mouth move? <laughs> so there are, like, little <laughs> strings on the back that are attached to almost, if you picture, like, um, curtains, how you pull yeah. on one side and it kind of moves it. That's how it works. So she had to get really good at just using her hands a little bit to move it up and down. Wow. Mama, come. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, that is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I was asking Mrs. Kane a lot of the behind the scenes things at the uh, Shrek Fest. <laughs> a lot of fun. Are there any other questions I can answer? Oh. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks Happy holidays. Have a good night. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. All right, next on uh, the agenda is new business, and we have a presentation of the North Reading High School faculty and students. Mr. LaPrat, would you like to take it away? We are allowing the students to study tonight, so we've just got the faculty, <clears throat> but we'll be speaking on their behalf. And uh, if you would like to kind of move to the uh, audience seating, that's fine too. Um, we're kind of um, <coughs> formalizing a theme that we've had for a long time, student at the center. And tonight I'm happy to uh, present uh, to you some faculty uh, who uh, are giving you an insight into kind of uh, three areas that uh, really kind of shine on this student at the center philosophy. So our program, will start with uh, Matt, Mr. Matt Costello uh, in the phys ed department, talking about a skills-based approach to health and wellness. Then we'll have uh, Ms. Brittany Cabral and Ms. Caitlin O'Donnell, two school psychologists, speak about the wellness workshops that are happening this year. Uh, then we have Mr. Plasman and Mr. Sikorsky from the math department kind of student-centered instruction with big ideas and uh, online mathematics instruction. And then I will uh, come back and join you at the end to talk about uh, new course proposals for the 2019-20 school year. So I'm happy to introduce Mr. Costello. Thank you so much. Perfect. Um, so just a few thank yous to start off. Just thank you for taking the time to listen to me tonight and all of us. And then I need to thank Samantha Whitney as well, who is not here. She's the freshman health education teacher. She helped me put together this presentation, and we are on the same page as far as our philosophies go when it comes to skills-based health. And if at any point in time you have any questions, just please feel free, uh, raise your hand, and I'll, I'll call on you to clarify any information. So our philosophy, just to read off the slide here, is to provide students with skills, allowing them to implement knowledge into real life experiences, enabling them to live a balanced and healthy lifestyle. And a common theme that I'm gonna talk about within this presentation is it's not about what students know, it's about what they can do, and that's what skills-based health is all about. 
So skills-based health education, just a definition for those of you that don't know, it focuses upon development of knowledge, attitudes, values, and skills needed to make and act upon the most appropriate and positive health-related situations within real-life experiences. So we want to make it as real-life and to accordance with students' real life as much as possible. So this includes life skills such as interpersonal skills, decision-making skills, critical thinking, creative thinking, and then also having authenticity within their education as well when it comes to some of their uh, projects that we measure, the skills. So I'm, I'm not going to go through all of these, but we have standards-based units. So the standards-based units are in accordance to the national health education standards. So a typical unit, for example, might be accessing valid and reliable information. That's the skill. That's going to be the skill that we're going to measure. And we may align that within the topic of nutrition, for example. Miss Whitney, I know, freshman year, talks about accessing valid and reliable information with drug use, so kind of like busting myths about maybe marijuana use or alcohol use. So, for example, with me, it could be, okay, so how can we practice the skill of if you want to live a healthy lifestyle and you want to focus on your diet, um, as opposed to maybe finding a website online that says, hey, take this magic pill and you can lose 40 pounds in two days. So it's being able to access valid and reliable information that we can trust, and that's a skill that students will be able to practice from now into the rest of their life. So that's just kind of like a small glimpse into maybe how an assessment or a lesson may go. And just kind of continuing the national health education standards. Um, advocacy, that's a skill that we may align with uh, self-image. So how can we advocate for a positive self-image within someone? That could be creating a PSA, um, spreading awareness about mental health issues. These are the kind of skills that we want students to be able to practice and apply them to real life experiences. Does that make sense? So why skills-based versus knowledge-based? Again, it's not about what people know, it's about what they can do. An example that Miss Whitney and I like to bring up a lot to our students is people who struggle with illegal drug use. So people who are struggling with drug addiction, they know that the drugs are bad for them, and yet they're lacking some of the step-by-step decision-making skills and focusing on what are the values as to why I'm making this decision. So if a student is in that situation where they are being peer pressured, they need to think of the decision making process and why am I making this decision based off of the value that I have. Maybe it's valuing not getting in trouble with the sports team. That could be an influence as to why they're making their decision to stay away from that risky behavior. So that's just an example as to why skills-based health is so focused and important on the skills rather than just the content and what we want them to know. Um, these are just some references for some resources that I had. Just kind of in conclusion, we think focusing on what students can do as opposed to what they know is going to set them up for an optimal life well beyond North Reading High School. And yes, they have to practice the skills, and yes, they know how to do the skills and they need to apply them to a real life, but we think just practicing and measuring those skills over and over and over again from freshman to sophomore year, and even in middle school, will set them up for the best life that they can possibly have. I have a question. Yeah. So uh, Amy Luckwitz comes in and reports to us on some studies that are done and some, um, some questions that are asked to students and then reports to us on you know the results and where where we stand and North Reading stands compared to the state and the nation and so do you work with her a lot on that and try to get that information to maybe address specific areas like you know marijuana marijuana versus something else or vaping versus something else we do and with that specific example um, they they focus on the content of drug use freshman year so they actually come into our classroom and they deliver kind of this informative presentation and then we take that information and then align it with the skill. Okay, what's the skill that we want to be able to do now? So yes, um, we are in collaboration with them and we try and use them as a great resource as much as possible. So it's a good question. So I have a question that the methodology makes perfect sense, but who, how do you decide what topics are, are covered? Are the required topic areas like drug use or vaping or, or whatever? 
Right, so Samantha, Whitney, and I, we collaborate and say, okay, freshman year, these are kind of the subjects that we're gonna focus on. And then for me, sophomore year, these are kind of the subjects that we're gonna focus on. Um, there are Massachusetts State uh, mandated topics that we talk about as far as like nutrition, human sexuality, healthy relationships. So there are sta state mandated topics that we align with the skills. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Um, when you talk about the, 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 the skill of advocacy, do you talk about one-on-one -on -one messaging or is it more of a broad basing? So broad based. So a requirement, for example, with an assessment is that they have to go to the school cafeteria, get survey data, and spread awareness of their message. So it's practicing getting your message out to a large audience, and that kind of happens outside of the classroom. So does that does that make sense? And so you don't. And so, and so the flip side is you don't talk about how to to deal one-on-one -on -one with someone to, to sort of spread that message? So I think as far as one-on-one -on -one goes, I like to talk about the resources that we have within the school, right. um, like the uh, counselors, guidance yep. counselors, where if there is a situation where maybe it's above your head, right. let's use the resources that we have within the school, so. Right. Yeah, so it, it's hard to practice the skill of like sleeping because it's like we're not actually going to sleep in class. Um, but as far as communication skills, that's something we practice. So I, I measure in my class how to actually listen to someone, which requires your voice is off, your head is up, you're keeping your body calm. And we actually have students observe another person doing that and giving them active feedback. So yeah, we try and practice communication skills and as much as possible, self-expression skills, um, conflict. Hey, maybe resolving a conflict isn't the best setting to do over text message. Maybe face-to-face -face conversation is a better outlet. Maybe at a school basketball game isn't the appropriate place to resolve a conflict between you and a friend. Maybe a more private setting out of the public. So yeah, we try and focus on um, some of the life skills and I think the things that we get frustrated with as adults when we see our youth when they're so glued to the, the technology, so. Any other questions or? Yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. I really like that idea because obviously this school, like many others, has had situations where either an individual student or in some cases some of our teams, a pretty good group of students made a really bad decision and they, I remember one time they were banned from playing in state playoffs for, yeah. for, for a year, a season, and you know, a group of students. And maybe if they had that kind of values-based training and they say, geez, I'd really like to play in that semifinal game for the state championship right, right. and not have one can of beer Right. Kind, of, kind of balance that off. I, I like that approach. Yeah, and you know, and we talk about too, like alcohol doesn't discriminate. You know, right. Al alcohol will take anyone down. So yeah. it's really important that you do understand what's important to you, and that's gonna help you influence the decision that you make in that real life moment. You have a hard time dig, I'm sorry. Go okay. Ahead. You have a hard time digging deeper for those who aren't, don't have some of those obvious counterbalancing things like athletics? Um, to, to sort of find that that hook to yeah you know that have a work on yeah you know that that's that's a really good point um, and I think some students do struggle like what's important to them yeah. um, and high school is all about a time where it's figuring out who am I it's all about self identity um, so if a student's struggling with their self identity mm -hmm. and they have this group that's you know hey this is this is a way you can be a part of our tribe right. try this. It is really tough, it is really tough, but I think just the constant dialogue and just the practicing of skills is what we hope is going to hopefully, you know, help help out that, that kid. So it's a good point though. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Matt. Excellent point, Reg. Good one. So we are uh, transitioning to uh, our two school psychologists, uh, Ms. Cabral and Ms. O'Donnell, going to talk about wellness workshops that are happening. Thank you for having us. So I'm Brittany Cabral, I'm one of the school psych psychologists at the high school. And I'm Caitlin O'Donnell, the other school psychologist, brand new to North Reading and really excited to be here. Um, so what we're doing, um, we're starting this year are some wellness workshops um, with um, the 11th graders at the high school. Um, so part of our rationale for choosing 11th grade, um, so traditionally, at least in the past few years, um, when we've implemented some mental health or wellness um, interventions, typically we tend to focus on either tier three, so you know individual students like individual counseling, um, or tier two um, being kind of small groups of students that are identified um, as at risk. Um, and usually we get, you know, we are introduced to those students based on um, like a referral process from guidance or from teachers um, who are concerned about those students. Um, so we wanted to think of an intervention to do that really gets more at um, tier one. So um, something that we can do in the classroom that impacts um, a you know, greater number of students, not just students who are identified as at risk, um, but just you know, kind of students in general. Um, and also you know, part of our rationale of you know, choosing 11th grade um, is we have seen an increase in stress levels around that time. Um, you know, there's different reasons. I think you know, starting to think about the college process, it's the academic rigor, um, and um, I think another kind of reason why we chose 11th grade too is, um, you know, Matt talked about the health curriculum, um, which is freshman, sophomore year, which is when students take health, and then junior year, they're not required to take it, and most don't. Um, so there, there is that gap there um, where they're not getting that kind of practice and self-advocacy and things like that. Um, so we came up with um, a series of three workshops. We're still working on it. Um, that we're going to pilot in two 11th grade power block classes. So that's the time during the day around lunchtime, about 40 minutes. Um, and then we hope to, we're planning to implement um, or offer the workshops to all the 11th graders as an optional um, workshop or series of workshops um, later on in the year. Um, and, you know, we're, we're still implementing our needs assessment right now, which Caitlin's going to talk about in a moment. Um, and we're going to use that data to inform the content of the workshops. Um, and the needs assessment is looking at kind of what students, what their awareness and their knowledge of coping strategies um, to deal with stress, and also their kind of awareness of, um, you know, how much they and their peers are actually using the strategies. Um, so we're hoping to kind of focus on um, three workshops, looking at one self care strategies. You know, what is self care? What are some examples? Um, and including some opportunities for them to actually practice the skills. Um, also, just kind of demystifying stress and you know what is good stress, what is bad stress, um, talking about positive and negative effects, um, and then also um, I think an important part is um, having them spend time and actually try to plan you know when are they going to practice these self care strategies, when are they going to you know integrate that into their busy lives, um, and through all of this we are going to design a pre and post test to uh, measure the outcomes and the effects of the intervention. Okay, so as Brittany mentioned, we are in the process right now of conducting our needs assessment. So over the course of the last several weeks, we've been visiting power blocks and inviting 11th grade students to complete a very short survey on Google Forms in which they share information about what they currently know and what they're interested in learning more about under this umbrella of wellness. And so, so far to date, we have um, 98, 99 responses. We have a few more power blocks to get into this week. And some of the data is really very interesting. And like Brittany said, it's helping us plan the content of our workshops. So what we're looking for, we want to see a lot of red and blue on these slides. And so what we see here is that 11th graders here at North Reading High School generally know what makes a healthy meal. They are agreeing and strongly agreeing with this statement. Similarly, they are agreeing and strongly agreeing that they know some ways to exercise. So this is promising. Also, here on the slide, um, we want to see a lot of red and a lot of blue, but you can see the colors really, really change here. So for this question number two, I know strategies to manage my stress. 
Right now, we have about 46% of 11th graders saying that they know strategies to manage their stress. And we actually have quite a sizable portion here saying, you know, neutral to this, which, of course, we don't really know what they mean by neutral, but they're not agreeing or strongly agreeing with the statement, which shows us that that's an area to focus on in our upcoming workshops. Secondly, number five, many students at my school use healthy coping strategies to manage stress. Um, this is also an area that we would like to focus on because we have um, about 47% of students saying neutral. Again, we're not really sure what they mean there, um, but we are seeing some green and even some purple start to appear on that chart, which is saying that you know students are disagreeing or strongly disagreeing with this statement. And again, that's their perception of their peers' behavior, so a lot to unpack there and certainly something we want to learn more about. Do you think, and this data may not have that answer, but do you think people are, they're, they're, they find it easier to identify the stress in their peers than they do in themselves? I think that's certainly possible, especially since we know adolescents are, you know, mm -hmm. building their ability to be self-aware. Um, they may not fully know what stress looks like for them. Um, and also, like I said, perception may not be reality, right? We're not asking them about their specific coping strategies, but we are asking them how they perceive the coping strategies that their peers are choosing. And then we also asked students to indicate where they would like to learn more. So emerging at the front, we have time management and organization. And then close behind, we have stress management and sleep. So we're hoping to and planning to incorporate those sleep. topics into our <laughs> workshops. And finally, so these are just um, some other other kind of reasons why we um, want to implement these workshops. Um, so this is just a little bit of research on um, or research effects of um, focusing on wellness and, and social emotional learning. So you can see that there's both academic benefits and then also um, benefits in terms of social skills and social emotional health. Um, so I think we're hoping to, you know, we're not necessarily measuring these in our pre and post tests, but we're hoping that we do see some positive effects. Implementing. I have a couple que questions. Yeah, how, sure. how much time can you devote to these kind of group wellness sessions versus the one on one sessions with students that also you know, need individual help? Yeah, that's a good question. I'd say <laughs> the bulk of our time, at least thus far, has been more working with individual students. Yeah. Um, that's why that's why I asked yeah, so, so we can push for more staff next year. You know, I'm like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, yeah, which is why we, we want to try to be making an impact on more students. Um, so we're hoping that this and this is the pilot. So, you know, if this goes well this year, we're hoping to implement it in more classrooms. Um, so. The other question is, um, you know, there's probably three generators of stress, of stress main ones is self generated, peer generated and parent generated. So how Will you be able to get the parents involved in this? Because, you know, my belief is in some cases parents need as much, if not more, education than the students might need. I think that's an excellent point. We did send home notices to families of 11th grade students, letting them know that we would be offering these workshops in the spring. So families are aware, and I would really like to consider sharing some of the data that we yeah, find that's, as well. Yeah, that's what I was. Yeah, that's yeah, great. That'd be great. Particularly with the needs assessment, but then also perhaps the pre and the post test as well. Yeah. Thank you. We're also planning to present at Parent University oh. on this topic. Oh, there you go. So. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that's great. So, that's that's and and uh, on, on Mel's first point, I mean, is this a new position that was created last year that we kept fighting about to try to get more counselors, or is this a different position, um, you know? Mr. Bernard, do you Caitlin's, know? Caitlin's, Caitlin is, is the person. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's what but I thought. Brittany's been here. Okay. But the position that we... But I, I didn't know if that was the, the position it was, so yeah. It is. It, yeah. We've been, so for a long time, trying to get more guidance Correct. counselors and school psychologists, so slowly, slowly we're getting there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think our, our strides in that area have been lately, low, but they've, lately been, they've, uh, they've been, been significant. A lot quicker lately. Yes. Yeah. It's been good. Lay the groundwork. Yeah. Thank you. Thank they're, doing, you. they're doing a nice job. I would yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah, thank thank you. you. Actually, I have one more question while you're walking away. Sorry. <laughs> the pre and post test, you said you were going to basically do A-B testing. Is it just 
administering the same survey later on, or is there something else you're doing for testing? So we, the needs assessment will be a one-time deal, and then we will create one additional survey that students will take um, before they participate in the free workshops, and then they'll take that same survey afterwards to see if, if they have learned something from the, from the workshop. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. On to our third uh, presentation here the, uh, from the math department, Mr. Plazin and Mr. Sikarski, uh, student-centered instruction with big ideas and online math. All right. Uh, thank you, Ms. LePret. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for having myself and my esteemed colleague here tonight to discuss some very exciting changes that have been occurring in the math department and math instruction here at the high school. Uh, mathematics education is very rapidly moving online and North Reading has done an excellent job remaining at the forefront of these digital trends that help to place a student at the center of instruction. Um, so with the adoption of the new state mathematics standards several years ago, the district piloted several new mathematics programs aligned with these changes and big ideas was chosen and formally adopted for use in Algebra 1, Geometry and Algebra 2 starting in the fall of 2016. Uh, but Big Ideas is much more than just a textbook series. It's a complete mathematical program developed with the Common Core Standards for Mathematical Content and Standards for Mathematical Practice as its foundation. It comes with access, and this is a game changer, to a full suite of online tools for teachers and students, the centerpiece of which is an online homework portal. Um, the Big Ideas website uh, is, provides a wonderful structure for students and teachers to access a data-driven and student-centered learning experience. Access is provided through the site to an online textbook or ebook, so that students don't have to carry the book back and forth to school, which I think is huge from uh, a student that did carry a backpack full of heavy books back and forth to school. And most of the coursework is also online, meaning students don't have to worry about missing worksheets or writing down what their homework assignment is. Everything is in one place in a consistent format and appearance across sections and courses. Um, so not only that, but year to year, as students move on from Algebra 1 to Algebra 2 uh, Geometry, the portal stays the same, the look and appearance of everything is very consistent, and I think that familiarity is really helpful for students. Uh, the online assignments allow teachers to customize the pacing and content of instruction for each individual student, and this personalized learning is also reflected in the feedback students receive as they complete assignments, with big ideas providing immediate feedback as to the correctness of their response. Um, and Mr. Sikorsky will get into uh, the data and student support tools Big Ideas has to offer, including what tools they have when their answers are wrong with the online assignments. And we can take questions about all of this, obviously. I hope that's not your student. I hope that's not you as a student. You have 13 overdue assignments, <laughs> no, Mr. Plasman. Come on, <laughs> get those done. <laughs> I, I, have, I have a question. You want yeah, wait, oh, so. Well, first, I just want to make a simple comment. We, whenever we go to schools, everyone always has a new, you know, innovative robotics makerspace. I like to just see good old-fashioned math sometimes, so I like that. Um, but my, my question is, when, when students are doing it online, mm -hmm. that's got to be challenging to a teacher as well. And like, and how do you, because I imagine, like, I, I know one of the challenges in, in math was always, I felt like in my math classes were always some kids were way ahead and some were way behind. And like trying to teach to that big of a spectrum is hard. And so like, I mean, how do you do it when they're online and, and you're monitoring that to try to make sure everyone is, is being challenged and moving on? So absolutely, as, as I, I would imagine, you'll speak to the data, the feedback, the information that we get as to where students are struggling, not only as a class, but the individual students, allows us to target whether it's remediation or uh, responsiveness to whatever we're teaching currently. Um, we know exactly what students are succeeding at, what they're not succeeding at, again, as an aggregate whole, but also individually, which lets us, I, I start every class knowing exactly what students didn't, under, didn't understand from the previous class, and we can target what most students are having trouble with, and then if, if there are you know, individual issues that individual students have that are not part of kind of the aggregate, then, you know, there's time certainly to go around and target those individual students, and assignments can be provided additionally to individual students, so if one student remediation in a certain content area, Big Ideas provides the opportunity that I can target one student with one assignment along with all the other resources that are going to help them learn and complete that assignment. And that, that's huge to be able to say, 
Well, you need a little help in this, and you can do this without having to rely on everybody, um, if, even though they don't always like have the actual workload now. But the fact that you have that tool now and the data to drive those decisions and those opportunities is huge. I have a, it's more of a, perhaps more of a general question about online access. I know we're, we're as a district, solving the device issue. Um, have we run into a significant problem of people just not having access to to having a, uh, access to Wi-Fi uh, at their homes? So, uh, I, this, I, in spite of this being my first year using Big Idea for geometry through pre-calc, we use a separate portal known as WebAssign that I've used for three years for pre-calculus. Mm -hmm. um, and during that time, the device access at the high school has significantly improved, particularly this year. And, and obviously, going forward, with the math department have acquired dedicated. <coughs> Devices just with the mathematics department that has hugely been helpful. Um, but as far as access is home, I would say it, it, it's very seldom it has occurred. But it is by no, it's definitely the exception and not the rule for a lot of students, which is nice. I, I give students a survey at the beginning of the year. One of the questions is which do you have a device and internet access access at home? Um, and we've been able to respond to students who got those. That's great. Yeah. Thanks. Well, all the assignments that we put up through Big Ideas can be done completely online. Uh, but because some students may not have access, I think of my 100 plus students, there was one who occasionally has problems accessing reliably online. Mm -hmm. uh, so just for those cases of uh, inaccessibility and also the cases where students would just prefer to do it on paper, there are, it's rare for a teenager to rather do something on paper, but <coughs> they do exist. I've got like three. Um, in addition to the assignment that I post on Big Ideas, I also post uh, like the assignment they could do on paper as well if they want to do it that way. So it's up to the student how they do it. I have like three students who do it on paper, right? So they prefer to do it online for the most part, but they've got the option, yep. right? Uh, so let's uh, thank you, Sean, for talking to us about the structure. Let's get into some of this other stuff uh, with Big Ideas. Uh, Big Ideas has a lot of support features. Um, I've got some stuff up here on the slide uh, that I'll, I'll go through, but uh, I just want to talk to you more generally about the support. Big Ideas was designed to offer individualized support as needed to students. The primary way the students interact directly with Big Ideas, uh, like Sean said, is by completing work assigned to them in the system by their teacher, frequently as a part of regular homework after each lesson. Within this homework platform, there are several student support features. Students can check their answers and receive instant feedback so they know as they're doing the assignment uh, how well they're doing, right? And then they can try the problem again. Um, <clears throat> there is a need help link uh, accessible when working on any question. Uh, this link leads to additional examples of the same kind and also to tutorial videos that can walk through students through the steps of how to do a problem. This is exceptionally good for like, not every student needs every video for every kind of problem, but most students need some kind of help with at least one kind of problem. And for a student who misses a day because they're sick or absent for any reason, they can access this material in the same way that they normally would without uh, having to do anything. They don't have to go find the teacher. They don't, the teacher doesn't need to do anything special. It's there for them in the same way it is for regular classwork. Uh, <clears throat> so these tutorial videos, uh, it gives them the specific help they need uh, on demand uh, in whatever way is needed for them in the moment. It's sort of like having an on-demand tutor, and that would be really great. If we had like a one-on-one -on -one tutor for every student, that would be a big help. Well, actually, if the examples and tutorial videos aren't enough, they can actually start a chat in the program with a live online tutor who can help them one-on-one -on -one with whatever problem they're having with the yeah. assignment. Sure, that's awesome. Yeah, I've had yeah. positive feedback. So that's I'm really cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's pretty incredible. It doesn't cost the students anything, actually, right? So that's cool. That's great. <clears throat> uh, all of these individualized one-on-one -on -one support features are available to each student on each assignment as they need them. Some student, and we can see as part of the reports that we get how long the students took to complete the assignment. And some students will complete it in 15 minutes. They don't need that extra help. Right? But other students will take an hour, and they wanted to get that extra help, and they got it. <clears throat> uh, 
Any questions about any of the support features that are part of the homework platform? Okay. Uh, also, this is my first year here at North Reading, but I've been informed that there's new features being added to Big Ideas each year. So, uh, and there's some new ones coming up that are including support for uh, MCAS 2.0, <coughs> which will be really helpful for our kids. Mm. What, right. what, what grades are using the Big Ideas and having the online support? What? So, uh, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, Geometry all use Big Ideas, and the pre-calculus students use something very similar called WebAssign. Big Ideas, for whatever reason, doesn't integrate pre-calculus as part of its um, curriculum. So that covers uh, a, the majority of math classes out there at the high school, not statistics or calculus or computer science, but the, the bulk of students use Big Ideas for everything. Through either freshman and uh, sophomore or freshman, sophomore, and junior. <laughs> All right, so um, these individual support features are really good for students able to um, enable their own support. <coughs> they can click on whatever they need to to find the help they need for it. But uh, in addition to this sort of self-enabled support, there's also uh, parts of Big Ideas that help the teachers provide the support that's needed. Um, this data-driven information is how that works. So. The most fundamental obstacle I think that student, uh, teachers face in providing the needed support to each student is the lack of detailed specific knowledge about that student's needs. <coughs> Once the class has done some work online, Big Ideas offers teachers detailed reports which contain useful data about these needs. Uh, I can use this rich information to analyze small ideas or big ideas, pardon the pun, for example, I can look across the entire semester or identify whether there is a kind of question that many of my students have struggled with all year long, or I can just as easily uh, reach details about any specific student, look into each assignment or each individual question that that student has answered all year long. Uh, so I can see the really big aggregate for my entire class, or if I'm about to have a meeting with uh, a student's parents, I can dive into deta details for that particular student if I need to. Uh, this data can be put to many uses. One relevant use uh, to tonight's theme of uh, student-centered teaching is to identify specific content areas and skills that need remediation during class time. Uh, let me elaborate via contrast with a traditional like textbook program. For example, with a traditional textbook, uh, the first few minutes of a class, maybe 10 minutes, it depends on how the teacher runs it, might be devoted to answering any questions that students have about the homework that's due that day. Uh, the time spent answering that question put forth by the students that happen to be brave enough to raise their hand and ask questions may or may not be all that useful to a large portion of the class. But with the data available to the teachers from Big Ideas, uh, I can be confident that those same really precious classroom minutes can be spent devoted to topics that I know uh, the largest possible portion of students struggled with on that homework. Uh, th and that can open up more time for going into more detail on that day's lesson or when they're doing work, providing that one-on-one -on -one support in the classroom is needed. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, any questions specifically about the data aspects of big ideas? Is it I know within within reason because yeah. there are time limits. You have a number. You have a lot of students. Sure. But does it allow you to almost customize homework assignments at all, or or no? Yeah. So it allows it to be fully customizable. I don't take full advantage of that, and I don't think most teachers probably would either. But there is at least uh, a very easy way to do it on a broad level. For example, when I assign uh, homework for section four point four, I can just assign everybody the same problems, which are average, right, mm -hmm. and they cover sort of a spectrum of what would be expected. I can sign everybody basic or advanced questions too, right? So I could say, well, you know what, it's really these four students who need a lot of help, who are struggling with the fundamentals, and these four students uh, are ready to move on. I can assign average to almost everybody, and then four, base, four students get the basic and four students get the advanced. I could go in and choose question by question what they get. No, but I think that yeah. level that you yeah. mentioned is probably as granular, granular as you need to get. I agree. But yeah. that, that, that's really helpful. Yeah, I, I agree. It's, it's very customizable. Like Sean said, you can, <coughs> assign, uh, you can put assignments to individual students, which I do on occasion when if somebody misses a day, the assignment that I put out to the whole class is already, the due date has already come and gone, I'll give them another assignment. Or if they struggle with it, I'll give them the basic assignment. 
right? Which they didn't get all those questions right. when they did the average one. Okay, great. And w w what, is, what is the support for the teachers in this? Because I know when the, when the devices were gonna be rolled out, a lot of it was also, you know, helping the teachers learn to use them and use this. I mean, are, are, all, the are all the teachers pretty familiar with this platform or is there a lot of learning at, for you guys still? Uh, I was, uh, as a new teacher this year at North Reading, one of my biggest concerns starting was, what textbook are we using? Where can I find the lessons? You know, where's the, where are the assignments and stuff like that? And once I, I was pointed to big ideas, it, was, it took me an hour to familiarize myself with the system and get a sense of how it worked. I'm still finding new features that I really like and new ways of using it, but uh, it was easy for me to go, oh, here is not only like, it's easy to assign the homework, that's probably what most teachers would say first off the top of their head, it's easy to assign the homework. Uh, also, having the homework online, there's never any question about, did you turn it in? Did you turn it in on time? Did you lose it? And uh, there's also the benefit of, they can see their uh, report of how that assignment went, and I can see it, right? If I collect the homework, they can't see it, and I've got a pile of garbage, right? But if they keep it, I don't know how they did, right? So having it online, where both people have easy access to it, that's another benefit. But uh, as far as the teachers go, I mean, my emphasis tonight has been on the support for the students, but I could have a longer presentation on how easy it is for the teacher, the system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's uh, really good for the teachers. Right. So these student support features of Big Ideas Math Program, they're not just extras that are appended to this larger system of lessons and assignments. They're integrated fundamental elements of the system. Big Ideas is not a mere replacement for traditional classroom material. It's not a substitute like a textbook, but online. Rather, it allows us to do things we could not do before, uh, to know our students' strengths and challenges more clearly, and to provide support that is more timely, targeted, and relevant. Right. Any other questions? Uh, that's, that's a great. Yeah. It sounds like we made a good decision on our uh, curriculum here. That's a great program. Yeah. Just that, that video alone. You know. Yeah. What? We we piloted as a district through different models. Different teachers, I think, kind of rotated <coughs> chapters in terms of which resources they were using. And as a department, we I mean it was ultimately decided by the administration and the school committee, but we put forth a recommendation as a department, and big ideas went out over the other one. I think it was my idea, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I heard we get some of that Dr. credit. Dr. Bailey, some, some of you that have been around on the committee for a while know, and excellent presentation, Thank both you. of you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it's, it's nice great. to get such positive feedback. Um, this is year three, Sean, am I right? Year three, ideas. Yeah. So you, you, you might remember the pilot. And right. ultimately, we brought the decision to, to you folks to, to adopt um, our recommendation, and it was, uh, was big ideas. So it's nice to, to see that it's working well, and you're both yeah. pleased with it. So. Yeah, very much so. All right, thanks very much. Thank you. Turn over to Mr. LaPrette. Great. When, when is this coming to other subjects, too? Yeah, right <laughs> really? All right. <clears throat> I really appreciate uh, everybody's uh, time this evening, so thank you. Um, I'm just going to take a, a couple of minutes and, and uh, brief you on kind of a new course proposal, which is kind of two course proposals, in a sense. Um, after after looking at uh, our curriculum in the, uh, in the English department, meeting with uh, the uh, curriculum specialist, uh, Mr. Evan Nosi, and his uh, feedback back with uh, the English department, uh, we are proposing a, a modern world literature course, which would be in two levels, an honors level and an academic level. Uh, and this is one that would uh, be available to senior students and satisfy their senior English requirement. Um, and the idea here being that because of our uh, kind of traditional setup with American literature as a junior and British literature as a senior, there, there's a lot of other written texts out there that students should really have access to. And how are we uh, providing that? How are we getting uh, authors of uh, you know, other cultural perspectives, authors of color and, and uh, the like into our curriculum with kind of American lit and Brit lit. Uh, 
So a course such as Modern World Literature uh, would allow us to do that. The um, English department is kind of overwhelmingly behind this idea. Uh, we feel like it uh, at the two levels, uh, I, you know, uh, I believe you have a copy of this, is, it, is that true? Yes, it is, copy? yes. So I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna read it to you. Uh, I'm gonna advance the academic. Um, and I think, you know, with this, with at two levels, it allows for a tailoring of the, of the specific uh, student population that is looking for an honors level course or is saying, you know what, I, I, I'd much rather uh, try to challenge myself in an academic level course, and there's gonna be some disparity uh, and difference in the text selections uh, between those two, uh, those two levels. Uh, it does, again, satisfy the senior English requirement. It touches upon all the uh, framework standards that you see there uh, in both levels. And I know that um, it's something that uh, kind of across the board people are excited about uh, given the fact that there, there are so many authors out there that we really want uh, to expose our, our students to and um, this kind of allows us to, some flexibility to do that and really would require no, uh, no additional staffing uh, given, the, given the kind of senior uh, focus on the, uh, on the course, yeah. Is there a, just a, for my own edification, is there a uh, proposed reading list for, the, for this course? So the, uh, the English department has uh, put together, uh, the, the, I think from the texts that, that they've collected and other texts that they use as, as other resources, um, there, is, there, is a, there, is a, there is a reading list. I think they're, they're looking to kind of refine it sure. um, and come up with, uh, but if you, look at, if you look at the text that we draw from right now, a lot, some of those some of those texts don't get you know, don't, don't get into circulation that much, right. um, and I think this allows that that opportunity for that to happen. I, I think you would find too that the curriculum frameworks would identify genres that could oh, be absolutely. part of the course, sure, and sure. therefore draw titles too. But doesn't the, and this fits into the with the core Common Core and the requirement for fiction and nonfiction. Non yeah. So there'll be a percentage of nonfiction Correct. works absolutely. as well. In, in the writing that would go along with right. it. Right. Yeah, that's yep. the standard. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> so my hope is that uh, we would uh, approve the uh, course proposal offering of the modern world literature at the two levels. How many sections? Would it be one section each? Could you offer uh, offer more than one you know, section? No, so I think, that's, I think that's an interesting. So seniors only. Oh, OK. Right? So, so now you're, you're taking, and again, for the seniors, we're kind of saying, all right, you're taking con contemporary dramatic literature. You know, kind of a kind of a you know it was fairly popular, but kind of a niche, yeah, a niche course. Or I'm taking British literature. Um, okay, well, it could be a little overwhelming. Um, and you know, kind of what am I getting, right? Uh, or I'm taking AP lit. Right. So I really want a kind of a, a broader uh, text selection, and I think this uh, this uh, this offers that journalism. Journalism. And the journal, yes, journalism, journalism, journalism. journalism. Again, it's kind of a right. right. And again, it's right. a neat. Right. So what it, what it comes down to is it, the number of sections might be determined just by the popularity. At, oh, absolutely, clearly, absolutely. Yeah. If, we, if we have if we have you know eighty seven kids sign up for it, we're going to run you know, three sections. Yes, yeah. right. because you because you don't need manpower or something else because that, it's that, either or. Exactly. Exactly. So um, Madam, we usually have a ask for a yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, I know right now it's just for seniors, but if you see it like just taking off, like will you offer it? So that's a, that's a good question. Um, at the so at the junior level with the American Lit, um, we may we may look to to see. Well, let's say what happens. Let's see what happens. I, but I, I certainly we don't want to have it uh, have something be restrictive where well you can only take this or that. Um, but um, it, it may come. It may. It may. We may look at the juniors and say, "Well, let's offer something okay. else." So you're uh, open to yeah. Uh, okay. Like like Always. like for you can take you have you take American lit and and if and if with approval you could take uh, this is an addition or because there must be some. I, I know I know there are a lot of my son was one. You know, might double up on a science course or yeah. double up on a math sure. course. I'm assuming there's lots of people who want to double up on a on a literature course as well. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, either one or both of those years. So, so, so the offerings, uh, right? The other, the other course offerings that would be available for the juniors 
Um, but I, it, it's funny because we initially we had talked about at, at the department level, we had talked about you know maybe two or three or four different offerings, and I, I my my kind of feedback to that was if we offer out all these three or four or five classes that we don't really know what's working well and what's not, or why kids are taking this and why kids are taking that. So let's 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 know, let's give them what, what we yeah. definitely know they want. And it's definitely gonna give us, uh, you know, uh, some breadth at that senior level and then kind of go and keep, a, 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 you know, an open eye as we move forward. All right. Um, I will accept a motion, uh, I'll entertain a motion to accept the two new, um, Literature. I, I would uh, like to move that uh, we vote to uh, accept the two new courses, Modern World Literature Honors and Modern World Literature Academic. Second. Thank you. Any other discussions or questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. All right, tremendous. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I'm good. I'm, you're good here? Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you so much. You. Are you staying Thank for you. hockey, too? Oh, uh, I'm happy to. You can. It's a quick one. I'm just going to do a tech step here. Mr. Bernard, trying to put more English classes in. <laughs> I, I mean, that's the kid we talked about this last week. Yeah, that's a course I would have liked to have taught. Yeah. Okay, how can I help with the hockey? It's just a trip proposal. Yeah. Do yeah. you have it there, AJ? Uh, I'm just here, I got it right there. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Excuse me. Doing so uh, this is an annual uh, an annual proposal, an annual request. Uh, the hockey team does play in a tournament down the Cape, uh, and they are requesting uh, permission to attend an overnight and sandwich on uh, Monday, the 18th of 2019. Yeah, I think it's a, there's a typo in your report. Yeah. It should be. Yeah. It's, it's, it's <laughs> not. It's not an 11 day really trip. Long trip. <laughs> it's the 18th and 19th. Yeah. I'm sorry, it's there. Okay, I think yeah, it's yeah, correct. Wait, wait. It's, it's in the report. It's on. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but they have a game on Monday the 18th, and then they play on Tuesday the 19th, and then they come home that evening. And the parents drive them down and with, stay that's right. with them as well. That's right. That's right. Correct. All right. Any questions? I'll entertain a motion to approve. I move to approve the annual varsity boys hockey trip to the sandwich. Massachusetts tournament on February 18th and February 19th. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thanks, Thank AJ. You. Thank you, Adrian. And with that, <coughs> Mr. Bernard, would you like to uh, outline the calendar? calendar? I would, Madam Chairman. So I have uh, before you tonight a proposed um, calendar for the 2019-20 school year. Um, I don't think that there's anything particularly out of the ordinary here. The one thing I do feel like I want to call your attention to, this dra draft represents, um, I'll say my decision, or at least my proposal to you, but I did vet this with the Administrative Council first, to, to not have school on Monday, December 23rd of 2019. Technically, that's not a holiday, but um, I'm certainly willing to listen to your feedback on whether or not you think we should or should not have school on, in session. No, you make them come in for one, one day. day. I, that's I, just I, me. I didn't think yeah. you would disagree, but I didn't want to not <laughs> call your attention to it. However, I will say to you also that coupled with that is you can see that the proposed last day of school is June 26th, that that's with five snow days. That left very little wiggle room if we had a, a particularly bad winter. Right, leaves us two days. <laughs> so what I did was we, 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 we captured a day by, typically we would have a second full day of professional development and it would have fallen on March 6th of 2020, but we decided to make that a half professional development day so that we would get credit for the day of school and therefore we would pull us back to June 26th as opposed to June 29th, so I think that just made sense. Yeah. Um, the I think everything else is pretty standard, quite honestly. I don't think there's anything else to to um, to speak about. It was a pretty pretty standard move forward a year. Madam Chair, I have a question. <clears throat> John, I don't, I don't know what other districts do, I don't, so I don't have any idea what the answer to this is going to be. But I keep hearing this. Um, we have way more half days than everybody else does. Why do we have so many half days? It's 
it's a hardship on the parents to find. Do we have more half days? And if so, do you know? And if so, why? I, I think, no, I don't think I was anything out of the ordinary. If anything, if anything, I'd be surprised if we had more professional development than any of our neighboring communities. But I mean, so most districts have the, they'll have the six half days a year for elementary yeah, parent I think conferences. That's, I think say. that's fairly standard. That's standard. We do. Okay. Yeah. Now other districts, and I don't know. If there's nine. Do yeah. we get more credit? There's nine on here. Yeah. Yeah, but only the PD. Okay. He's talking about the PD, I think. Okay. HML professional do, development. Do the, um, other districts, some districts have the kids stay for lunch at half days. And they, do, they, do they get more, quote, time and learning hours out of that? Or I'm, Well, I mean, they're in, they're in session, but we're well in excess of our required okay. 900 or 990. All right. And if I may. Yes. The, o the only thing I'll say is I say it every year, and I, I, just, I just think it's tough at the little school when they're the early school and drop off from preschool to mm -hmm. the element to the uh, elementary which is why also for if the parking lot is paved then there was another place that could be dropped off that would be very helpful yeah, to that point and, and and I the point is they, not they lost. work with I, they work I, with I don't it, have so. a good solution no, on so. the time um, but I will tell you when we went before the capital improvements planning committee last Thursday we did speak about if that paving project was uh, approved that if we would also be looking to do something that would you know Maybe mitigate some of that. Yeah, at least, I don't know if it'll eliminate. I don't want to yeah. go so far. I'd love that, but I, I would at least say mitigate. I think we talked about that back in, when we first proposed to you the mm -hmm. the, the, the lot um, being repaved. And, and again, the only way we could have all three elementary schools on the same schedule is if we had more buses, correct? Correct. Which obviously is extremely costly. Correct. Mm -hmm. We need what five more buses? Yeah, or you'd need something like that. Yeah. Would it be Which would be thousand dollars a day, something like that. Really? Well, it's about sixty-five thousand dollars a bus. So we're talking three hundred twenty-five thousand. Okay, there never mind. Yeah. <laughs> and w and do we still rotate? Yes, every two years. Every so two next years. year is year two of this right. yeah. of the of the cycle. Yeah. So the four tiers is what keeps the buses in the quantity that we where we have it. So I think the bachelor school actually runs. About um, right now, they're running seven buses. Wow! And some days they even run more than that. Eight. So it, you almost have to have work those in, and then it would change a lot. It could even add more than five at this point. Mm. Um, right, because if it was right, I hear what you're saying. Because yeah. the batch needs seven, and the hood and the little both have five each. Oh wow! So if they're all four, we, we, we need like six or seven buses. It's not, yeah, it sounds be, like yeah, maybe more it would than be that. Very expensive, Co cost prohibitive, really. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Interesting. <coughs> um, all right. Uh, any other questions or concerns? All right. I'll entertain a motion to accept the calendar as presented. <coughs> I move to accept the 2019-2020 school calendar. Second. Hard to believe. 2020. 2020. I know. Isn't that crazy? Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. And I'd just like to say 2020 is when we get back to my favorite year of the cycle, where the time between Memorial Day and uh, Labor Day is the longest. Memorial Day comes on the very earliest it can be, and La Labor Day comes on the very latest it can be. So you're, it's the longest summer of the Sounds wonderful. of a six-year right. cycle. Right. <laughs> yeah, it is. I'm looking. Yeah. You know, in hindsight, 2020 has always been my favorite year. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I should have said that was awful. No, 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 that's a good one, actually, I, I have to say. I hadn't but your point is also very good. The longest summer, I like that. I it's too bad, it's too bad the weather didn't Exactly, yeah. yeah. The calendar does. Yeah. Since in my, at my work, we go summer casual from oh, okay. Memorial Day to Labor Day. Labor Day, there you go. Something yeah, thing. yeah. <laughs> All right, next we have minutes. Um, I will entertain a motion to accept the minutes of November 19 open session. I will move to accept the November 19th open session minutes as written. Second. All right. Any questions or concerns? All in favor? Aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, we do not have a budget update and no staffing update at this time. That's correct, either. Madam Chairman. All right. Rich, would you like to do the honors? I, w I love doing <laughs> this. Big list tonight. I love this. This is great. Oh. I love doing it. Cindy, I forget you like us to alternate or not. No. <laughs> <laughs> 
So who's doing? We could take. Two. It's a lengthy who's doing list. Wait, why don't? Why don't uh, <laughs> who's gonna do them? Santa's paying attention. Uh, let's have Diana and Scott do them tonight. Oh, I like reading them. Oh. No, I'm trying no, no, no. No, to do the. Oh, 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 one, one second. second. Oh. We'll have Diana do the seconds tonight. What do you think? Is that good, Madam Chair? <laughs> that works. Are you me. okay with that? I'm absolutely fine with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be easier for Cindy. <laughs> Madam Chair, I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of fifty dollars from Ms. Kathleen Apigian to be used to purchase items for the LD Batchelder Elementary School Thanksgiving baskets. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Madam Chair, I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $50 from Kristen Wasilewski to support costs associated with the middle school musical, The Adams Family. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $100 from Mrs. Barbara Duff to support costs associated with the middle school musical, The Adams Family. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $320.82 from the North Reading Music Boosters to purchase a Yamaha portable keyboard and four keyboard stands for the Hood Elementary Music Department. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $546.71 from the president and treasurer of the North Reading High School class of 2018 to purchase an electronic sign to be installed at the high school. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I have sorry, a question. Just a comment. I was going to ask yes. you. Okay. Yes. I just, I just because I don't want people to have a, a misconception about. So we are. You might, you might. Some of you will recall that there have been a number of classes over the years that have contributed to this. Um, project so we're, we're still you know a bit away from from a, the realization of a, of a yeah, digital sign us. but yeah, yeah I, you know I think we're, we're I would at this point I would guesstimate to be in about the area of about twenty thousand dollars raised okay give or take so into that right. MTL. So, yeah, I don't want you to think there's gonna be something up there on Monday. No. <laughs> <laughs> and, and does that MTL the account for the class of 2018 it does except for um, their except no, for they, their only they keep like, a balance that they maintain it so like they're reading the fund, but it's there. It closes the account because they've come and withdrawn that. It's out of our hands. Okay. Yeah. Our hands. So, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, all in favor of that last motion? No, we already approved. Well, he interrupted, I thought, before. No, we approved. No. Oh, okay. I would never, I would never interrupt him. <laughs> his timing was Interrupted. His timing was a little bit off. It was the, the most well, I'm superintendent for now. How dare I? I, I, I was asking why we need one keyboard and four stands for it. Well, <laughs> I'm guessing we already have keyboards that those stands will be used for, is my guess, but I don't know. What do I know? Not much, right, Scott? <laughs> Um, I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude in-kind donations for the above list of school activities and expenses from September 2018 through November 2018 from the North Reading Middle School Parents Association, totaling $1,453.12. Richmond activities and teacher appreciation luncheons. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude in-kind donations for the above list of school activities and expenses from September 2018 through November 2018 from the North Reading Music Boosters totaling $1,461.38. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude in-kind donations for the above list of school activities and expenses from September 2018 through October 2018 from the J.T. Hood Elementary School Parents Association, totaling $1,735. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Let's just one thing. I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude in-kind donations for the above list of school activities and expenses from September 2018 through November 2018 from the E.E. E. Little Elementary School Parents Association, totaling $2,420.05. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Motion carries. I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude in-kind donations for the above list of school activities and expenses from September 2018 through November 2018 from the North Reading High School Parents Associations totaling $5,788.55. Second. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. It's like the Energizer Bunny just know, keeps yeah. going. It does. Going. What a great yeah. mm -hmm. couple of months for the associations. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude in-kind donations for the above list of school activities and expenses yeah, yeah, yeah. from September 2018 through November 2018 from the LD Batchelder Elementary School Parent Association totaling $6,063.10. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. That's incredible. That's really good. This is 62 really or 63. Is. What? It's 62. 62? 63. I move whatever it said here on the sheet. Go <laughs> <laughs> by the sheet. So. All right. Um, on to subcommittee updates. Um, Mr. Botwell and. <laughs> Sorry, I just said it the wrong way. Oops. Um, Ms. Boutwell and Mr. McGowan, if you would like to update us on what's happening. So we met, um, when did we meet? The seventh, I think it was? Um, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. or the, the yeah, sounds right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, one of the things, we reviewed section D of the um, uh, manual and also uh, revisited the, uh, the, the um, policy that you guys rejected on us oh, yeah. and uh, but we I think we did uh, made some good progress uh, clarifying that language and we're going to present it in January right. so yeah. I think there I think there's a total of three policies that one placing items on the school committee agenda right that was the one, yeah. that yeah. one mm -hmm. and then two out of item D that had some revisions that the committee thought you should see so there'll be three for first readings in at January's meeting yep and were you ever able to go back to the packets that we were working on? Yeah, there's on still time? some there. I'm not I'm not shirking it, but it's you yeah, I know well, yeah, a couple just, of it was legality. Yeah, some of them were and there's not nothing earth shattering in any of them, but I did based on the last meeting, so I have probably about six, I would say, in total. Yeah, that that need a little bit of work, but yeah. nothing nothing earth shattering. Okay. I think some of them also there were a couple, I think, that stem from one of the changes that you're going to see proposed next uh, meeting about the um, change in title for the Director of Pupil Personnel Services to a Director of Student Services. Okay. And so some of that goes back to, I think, a couple of policies as well, if that gets approved. So. That'd be good because I can never remember that title. That is, uh, yeah, that's something that I've hoped, I, I'm really glad that's going to happen <laughs> because that director has no bearing on the job. You exactly, know, exactly. right. I, I it it's it's just a much better, it's a much clearer title about I think, what I think it's more the person temporary. Does. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was the only subcommittee that met. So the upcoming schedule, the Substance Abuse Coalition meets tomorrow at 10 a.m. at the North Reading Police Station. CIPC meets December 19th at 4 p.m. Happy birthday to my sister. Um, uh, at 4 o'clock at Town Hall, Room 5. Finance Planning Team meets December 21st at 8.15 a.m. at the Superintendent's Office. NORCAM Board of Directors meets December 27th at 7 p.m. in the NORCAM office. Happy birthday to me. Oh. oh. Mm. <laughs> we'll have to. All right. Um, <laughs> athletic <laughs> subcommittee. The I'm not be there. <laughs> <laughs> They'll throw you a party at NORCAM. Yeah, Canada. yeah. <laughs> the athletic subcommittee meets January 8th, 2019 at um, 12.30 p.m. in the superintendent's conference room. And the policy subcommittee meeting meets January 24th at um, 4 o'clock at the superintendent's conference room. Madam Chair, if I may, I didn't know if the committee wanted updates on the uh, school start times advisory committee meetings um, on a regular basis or just when there's something to report. So uh, I would, yeah, I would think after every, but I think after every meeting, well, if there's nothing to report, obviously. Yeah, but well, I mean, I, I, I would report that yeah. we had a meeting. Right, and, exactly, and yeah. Talk, talk briefly about it. But. Yeah, I think. Well, I, I'm assuming it'll come up under the subcommittee um, updates. Yeah, well, that. Well, well, which one? For school the start time. It's not a subcommittee, though. Oh, that's right. right. That's right. Oh, that's it's right. It's more like the. I think, uh, I mean, I don't know if you're asking my opinion. I would think at any time, if you feel like you want to give an update. Yeah. Right? I think. I would, well, I won't give one every time yeah. unless there's, but I will just say that we had our first meeting that I was a participant in uh, last week and uh, and really began to recognize the scope of the task that uh, that we have. So we're we're trying to gear up with some f a period of time where we're having more frequent meetings in uh, January and February and March, and uh, so we can hopefully get a little momentum going. Uh, not so much on making final decisions, but there's a lot to discuss and yeah. look into. So. 
talked about some meeting norms and, and establishing some parameters, but it was a good first meeting, or at least first meeting for me. And how many is in the, the in, um, so there's a uh, board for lack of better word? Total. There's a t yeah, I think 10 is the right number, 10 or, or around there. Um, and, uh, you know, given the nature of that number and everyone's different schedules, probably I mean, not everyone was there in this particular meeting, and that'll probably be not too uncommon just with, with all those parents, especially it's hard to, to, to uh, collect everyone. But uh, we've done some doodle calendar stuff, and we'll, we'll do what we can. So, John, you're participating. Is anybody else? No, I'm not. Actually, you're it's not. Dr. Daly who's uh, oh, it's Dr. Daly. Effort, uh, anybody, so it's Dr. Daly from the administration. Which Sean from Lee, school? Okay, good. Rich and a teacher from the high school, Nicole Pierce. Oh, excellent. Some of you might know. Yeah. yeah. And we're, we also talked about how we'll be relying an awful lot on uh, Mr. Clinton. Patrick told me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we gave Michael the head. <laughs> You'll have to answer a lot of questions, I would assume. For, at least, yes. Yes. <laughs> Is the goal to first start with trying to outline all the things that would need to be impacted? Or would, would it be impacted if a change happens? Or is the first goal to start by seeing if there's interest? Um, a little both. Or neither. Okay. Those are concurrent goals. Okay. I would say rather than impacts, uh, we, we identified some hurdles that we might need to overcome. Okay. Yeah. And we also talked about uh, beginning the process of gather, trying to gauge interest or, or gauge uh, people's opinion about it. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Mr. Bernard, do you have any? Nothing this evening, happen? Madam Chair. All right, no correspondence. So future business, January 7th, 2019 at 630 here in the Distance Learning Lab will be our next meeting, followed by January 28, 2019, 630, also here in the Distance Learning Lab. And with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I so move. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. See you at the horseshoe. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody?